Everybody stay calm, everybody stay calm. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. The new Little Mermaid trailer is finally here. Let's dive into it. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and I also have a boatload of thoughts on the brand new Little Mermaid trailer. Friends, I have been waiting for this for so long, as have all of us. Of course, we got our first look at the live action remake of Little Mermaid last year during D23. And I thought the little bit that they showed us looked surprisingly good. And I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I have been team Halle Bailey from day one. Ever since the day her casting was announced, I jumped onto YouTube. I was like, show me a video of this girl singing. I heard the voice. It was the voice of an angel, nay, a mermaid. I thought, okay, if nothing else, they got this right. But I have thoughts on other things about this trailer. You know, when this movie was first announced, like over three years ago now, one of my first videos on this channel was me explaining why The Little Mermaid can never work in a medium outside of animation. It's a perfect animated film. It doesn't work in live action. It doesn't work on stage. And I'm not gonna dive into that right now, but watch that video if you're interested in my thoughts there. Um, so let's see if this trailer proved me wrong. Here we go. It's time for another teacup for one. Matt overanalyzes a movie trailer review video. So the title is a work in progress. Okay, here we go. Who hides your dad? Abandoned ship! Okay, we're gonna pause it right there. This is not how I would have instinctively thought that, I know, right? This is not how I would have instinctively thought they would open the trailer for The Little Mermaid, but I love it. There is such a different energy to seeing the shipwreck scene in real life. I know I'm being a massive hypocrite right now. Like not 30 seconds ago, I was saying, oh, The Little Mermaid can't work in live action. It's only an animated film. Well, in this case, in the case of a shipwreck, I'm wrong. It looks so much better, so much more intense in real life. Most notable, this is our first look at Jonah Howard King as Prince Eric. And I think it's interesting that he's the one that seems to be like driving the ship. He's the one there at the ship steering wheel before the big wave overtakes it. If you watch the trailer with closed captions, he is the person who's yelling all hands on deck and like abandoned ship, abandoned ship. So seemingly Prince Eric in this movie is a captain or like a high ranking officer, as opposed to in the animated movie where he really he just seemed like he was on the ship for a pleasure cruise like he was just there for the ride and that's unsurprising to me because it's following a trend that we've seen really in all the live-action remakes over the past decade it's giving Eric more agency and making him less of a himbo now not to say that all Disney animated characters were himbos before they made the transition into the realm of live action but just the thing that Disney's been doing like in Beauty and the Beast Belle became an inventor in Aladdin Jasmine became a political mastermind in the Lion King Nala became Beyonce so I totally understand the move if Eric is now becoming like a sea captain as opposed to a freeloader on a boat who doesn't want to own up to his responsibility as a ruler. Let's keep watching. Quick pause there. Just like I was saying before, one of the benefits with the live action treatment is that it is just solidifying to me how terrifying it is to, to drown in the ocean. He was like Jack after Rose pushed his corpse off the door, just like fading away into the dark nothing abyss. But then Ariel is to the rescue and it is so gorgeous to hear that classic Little Mermaid theme, the ah, 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 ghostly ethereal, like the classic siren call that so many sailors probably wrote about and sang about. I don't have citations, but I think that's a thing. It just, it meshes together beautifully, and I love it, and Halle Bailey sounds impeccable. Let's keep watching. I just have to say, the the way that the opening of this trailer is structured is just like a mini movie in and of itself. One that I think is so engaging because this is this is a personal thing, a personal bias. I think the story of the Little Mermaid is so much more interesting from Prince Eric's perspective. Like, just imagine 
You're a prince. You're on a boat. You're shipwrecked. A mysterious person saves your life. You think maybe it's a sea creature. Maybe it's a mermaid. I don't know. And then this beautiful girl who, like, doesn't talk just shows up in your life. Like, if I was an executive making millions of dollars at Disney, I would have explored the possibility of having the live-action remake of Little Mermaid be from Eric's perspective. This clip also gave us our first look at Prince Eric's kingdom, which I think looks beautiful. Spoiler alert, everything that I love in this trailer takes place above the water. Everything I don't love takes place below the water. Um, but just taking a look at Eric's kingdom, I think there's a lot to unpack when you look at the costume design as well as the architecture. Now, I'm not an expert in costume design or architecture, so I can't actually unpack this for you and let you know what it's indicating in terms of when and where this movie is taking place. But I think it's it's clear that Rob Marshall and the entire team behind the film made that decision because of course one of the great mysteries about the animated film is when and where does this take place based on my labor-intensive Wikipedia research as well as some friends that I asked who know far more about these things than I do it appears that the time period of these costumes is indicating mid 1800s like the 1830s through to the 1850s which actually makes a ton of sense because that's when Hans Christian Andersen wrote The Little Mermaid. In terms of location the costumes seem to indicate French influence however this movie was shot in real life on location on an Italian island and there's lots of evidence to support the idea that Hans Christian Andersen actually wrote The Little Mermaid while he was vacationing in Italy. There have also been rumors that this movie is potentially taking place in the Caribbean, especially because Sebastian, of course, is retaining his Caribbean accent, so it would actually work out to have the movie take place on, like, a French Caribbean island. So I think those are the options, either somewhere in the French Caribbean or somewhere in the Mediterranean, like, specifically the Italy part. Um, I would have done more research, but we have more trailer to watch. Let's keep going. Has anyone else noticed that in this brand new Disney 100 logo, Pride Rock is just hanging out? behind the castle. I mean, I thought maybe there would be a ton of other Easter eggs from other Disney movies, but I, I don't think there are. It's just like it's a castle and then Pride Rock. Hmm. Let's watch more. You broke the rules. You won. Okay. Let's break down this live action aerial look because this is a topic of much discussion. First of all, the hair. I have never been that invested in Ariel having like fire truck red hair. It's a cool feature, but like I could take it or leave it. But I know a lot of people are still up in arms about the fact that her hair is more of a natural red as opposed to like this. Personally, I love it. I think it looks natural. I think it looks great on Hallie. It's a nice throwback to the original movie while still suiting live action. But you know what nobody's really talking about? The lack of clamshell bra. Now, just hear me out. I, like, I don't envy the person who had to costume design for live action Mermaid Ariel because this is just one of the many, many things that works in animation that just doesn't work as well in real life. But it also calls to mind the very unnerving question that's kind of become an internet meme. How does Ariel, like cartoon Ariel, decide which fish are her friends and which ones she like brutally murders and rips apart for her wardrobe? So with that said, I think this redesign with like more of a crop top look, again, I'm not a fashion person, but I think that's what they're emulating here. The pseudo mermaid crop top, I think it works. But the big question mark for me is why does it have gills? Just like, take a look, take a look. Ariel's top piece, like, it has gills, which means one of two things. Either that's a part of her mermaid body, and like, just her mermaid anatomy is fish bottom, human midriff, like, gills to breathe in the chest area, and then like, shoulders up are human-like again. Or, she killed another fish, skinned it, and then used its hide to create her wardrobe, which isn't much better than the clamshell bra question. But I guess it's not much different from, like, wearing leather, I guess. I don't know. You know what's more disturbing than that question? Flounder. Look at him. This is just, this is a whole other thing. This is another reason. This is reason number two in this video that Little Mermaid is not meant to be a live action movie. Like, why does he look like that? I understand that's probably what flounders look like, but here's the thing. Flounder is the fish's name. It doesn't have to be the type of fish that he is. 
You know, it doesn't have to be that on the nose. I don't go around introducing myself as human. He can be any type of fish who just has the name Flounder. And like, and like, why does he look like this when Caribbean blue angelfish exist in real life and they look like this? Just riddle me that. Okay, let's keep watching. He went to the above world. A man was drowning. I had to save him. This obsession with humans has to stop. Okay, you know what else has to stop? Casting Javier Bardem in things. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was too harsh. I don't actually have any issues with Javier Bardem. I think he's a fine actor. He's an extremely talented actor. I just think he's not always the best choice for the roles that he's been cast in, especially recently. Like, why was he Desi Arnaz? Why is he King Triton? Ugh, and this is probably just a Matt thing. Ever since No Country for Old Men, which is admittedly the first movie I saw him in, just Javier Bardem has like scared the crap out of me. And I think King Triton, well, actually, to be fair, as a kid, King Triton also scared the crap out of me. I wasn't scared of Ursula. It was all King Triton and like his terrible terrible anger issues like when he destroys the grotto that's when i had to turn off the tv and count to like 45 before i knew i could turn it on and like just couldn't do it so i guess in some ways it's appropriate that javier bardem the actor in hollywood who scares me the most is cast as the disney character who as a child also scared me the most but now as a grown adult i can appreciate that the little mermaid is truly king triton's story he's the character who has the most growth it is truly about his arc of being an overprotective parent realizing he has to let go of his daughter let her be her own person or her own fish and move on and grow up and alongside that, he also has to be like a terrifying, imposing figure who is the literal god of the sea. So casting this role, no easy feat, because you need somebody who can be that like scary, imposing god of the sea figure who is also an overprotective father. So there needs to be some softness there alongside the scary. And I've been thinking about this a lot for like the last 20 some odd minutes. And I know that if I'm going to make a bold statement like I'm not thrilled that Javier Bardem is playing King Triton, I need to be able to back that up with some kind of choice to say like this is who I would have cast as King Triton and I can't really think of anybody in Hollywood to fill that role and obviously there are a lot of options the one that I think of right now off the top of my head is Hugh Jackman I mean the man was Wolverine but he also has a ton of heart I feel like he can strike that balance that you need so yeah if I was casting this movie I would have gone for Hugh Jackman now maybe I'm being too harsh on Javier Bardem not even maybe. I'm being too harsh on Javier Bardem. What we're seeing in the trailer, it's a decent performance. It's fine. Like, I don't think he's going to ruin the movie by any means. But I question if he's going to be able to tap into that more vulnerable side that is so crucial to King Triton. But if we're talking about vulnerability in acting, oh my god! Halle Bailey. Just in that one line, a man was drowning, I had to save him. Let's just rewatch it, because it is so good. A man was drowning, I had to save him. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's only nine words, but there is so much packed into that. She is delivering every quality that you need in Ariel. Her delivery on that line is just giving me this perfect balance of strength and youth that is so crucial and so important to Ariel. She's taking ownership of her decision while at the same time you could tell she respects her dad and kind of fears him. I mean, this is just, it's everything. It's everything that that line in the cartoon, Daddy, I'm 16 years old. It's everything that that line was serving us, but in some ways even better. I just, ah, I knew she was going to be able to sing it perfectly, but every snippet I see of Hallie's acting wins me over more and more. Let's watch more. I just want to know more about them. Ariel, don't! This is something that I've noticed throughout the trailer, like in the stuff that we've seen so far and the things that we're going to continue to see. They are recreating almost shot for shot some of the most iconic images from the animated film. Now, normally, that's something that I would hate with a passion. And I don't know why, but it's one of my favorite things about this trailer. I think the previous live action remakes were trying so hard to do their own thing, which I absolutely respect, and I think that is the right choice. However, Animated Little Mermaid, in my opinion, is a very visually driven film 
more so than a lot of other Disney animated classics. I mean, the only other one that I can think of off the top of my head that comes close to Little Mermaid in terms of pure visual storytelling would be Cinderella. And there are so many shots and so many images that just pack so much narrative into the visual composition that I feel are so crucial to how the original animated film is structured that it really it makes a lot of sense to me that they would want to retain that. In a lot of ways if you're remaking Little Mermaid I almost feel like keeping those iconic images hold the same importance as keeping say like part of your world or under the sea. So if you had told me a year ago that this Little Mermaid movie was going to be recreating a bunch of images from the animated film I would have written it off and said like that's a terrible choice but now that I see it there's a magic to it and I'm sold. Let's watch more. Poor child. I can help you. You can't live in that world unless you become a human yourself. All right, here she is. Put your hands together for our queen, Melissa McCarthy, as Ursula. I have a lot of thoughts on this. When Melissa McCarthy was rumored to be cast as Ursula, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. And truth be told, I was and still kind of am shocked that it's not Queen Latifah. Because as we all know, but you may need reminding, Queen Latifah played Ursula in the ABC Little Mermaid live show like a year and a half, two years ago. And she was outstanding. She sang the hell out of Poor Unfortunate Souls. She was just so good. And aside from that, the fact that she was cast as Ursula around the same time that they were casting for this movie, this movie is being directed by Rob Marshall, who got his start in Hollywood with Chicago featuring Queen Latifah. She was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress as Mama Morton, and she was outstanding in that movie. And based on all the like behind-the-scenes featurettes that I watched, she had a fantastic working relationship with Rob Marshall. So, I don't know, it just, it shocks me that it's Melissa McCarthy and it's not Queen Latifah. Now with that said, I'm not disappointed that it's Melissa McCarthy. I was a little on the fence when I heard the casting announcement, not because I questioned Melissa's ability as an actor, but just because I sort of question the types of roles that she's been put into over the past few years because ever since Bridesmaids, Melissa McCarthy has kind of become a comedy brand unto herself. And it's a thing that you see with a lot of very successful comedians. It's like, it's the reason that I don't like most Will Ferrell movies, but I love Will Ferrell as an actor. I love Melissa McCarthy as an actor, but I don't love the type of character that she's sort of been pigeonholed into over the past five to ten years. And it would be so easy for them to reimagine Ursula in that vein because Ursula is a very campy character and there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, quite the opposite. That is what makes Ursula such an iconic, amazing Disney villain. She's over the top, she's dramatic, she's a full camp queen and those are the things that we love about her. But the trap with Ursula is leaning too much into that and losing sight of how those elements work into her character overall because yes Ursula is all of those things but she is intelligent she is a manipulator she is a showman all of those big performative elements are tactics that she's using to ultimately seduce Ariel and win her over so that she can sign the contract as part of Ursula's bigger plan so to pull off an Ursula performance effectively you need somebody who can deliver on all the campy elements that we love while still grounding it with the intelligence that is so crucial to the character. And there have been so many Ursula performances that have leaned into the comedy and leaned away from the intelligence factor over the years that, I don't know, that's why I was very much on the fence with Melissa in this role. But from what we're seeing in the trailer, I think Rob Marshall, well, why am I saying I think Rob Marshall understands the balance? Of course he does. Rob Marshall is like my favorite director, so I trust him. I think the combined power of Melissa McCarthy and Rob Marshall is going to make Ursula work the way that she is meant to work. In terms of the aesthetics of how she's being designed, I'm still not sold on all this under the sea CGI, under the CGI. I don't like the bioluminescent tentacles. Don't like them. Anyway. More. That's what I live for. <laughs> oh my god! Remember what I was saying? 
about the emotional power of recreating some of the most beautiful shots from the animated film? Let's watch this again. Oh, it is so beautiful. I don't know who the cinematographer for this is, but like nominate them for an Oscar just for that shot. Just for that shot, okay? Keep going. Something about you seems different. I can't quite figure it out. She got legs, you idiot. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a... <clears throat> Scuttle and Sebastian. Scuttle and Sebastian. I'm gonna say this first. I love Scuttle. I mean, I don't like, I'm not saying I love Scuttle from the animated movie. This Scuttle specifically, I would die for her. She is hilarious and adorable. And I don't know why we don't have that weird uncanny valley thing going on with her, at least to my eye, that we do with literally every other talking animal in this film. And Aquafina, I know we're just hearing a couple words, but perfect casting for Scuttle. So, I am Team Scuttle all the way. I'm loving this. You know what I'm not loving? Sebastian. What is that? I'll tell you what it is. Apparently this is a real type of crab which is called a fiddler crab. According to my labor-intensive Wikipedia research, this type of crab can't breathe in like the deep undersea, so it makes absolutely no sense that this is the crab that would be hanging out with Ariel. But credit where credit is due, this is a type of crab that is able to breathe both underwater as well as on land, so... I guess I understand why they would go for him in that respect. Like, yes, Matt, suspend your disbelief. You can accept mermaids. You can't accept a fiddler crab. No, no. And you know why? Because I, I was happier before I knew that these things existed in nature. Why are their eyes like that? Why? Nature, why would, why? Uh, and the only thing, the only pass that Sebastian gets in this movie from me is the fact that he's being voiced by David Diggs. David Diggs deserves a better Sebastian Crab design than this. I couldn't, I don't know what they could have done differently. I don't know if there's another species of crab that would have worked, but this, this, no. Why are his eyes like this? No, no, no. You idiot. Oh my god, it sounds so bleeping good. And it's not just Hallie, like I've established, Hallie sounds incredible and I love the acting, but the arrangement for this part of your world reprise, that little string section that they have going on in the background, not a music person, maybe they're not strings, but there's just this pulse underneath her singing that feels to me like a musical heartbeat. It's creating this beautiful sense of drive, tension, urgency. It is so good. And it's not reinventing the wheel. I think that's what's so special about this. Because the original part of your world reprise, essentially starting as a cappella, that has a power all its own. So it's not reinventing the wheel. It's just creating and building something brand new and equally beautiful around the wheel that still works. Ugh. And in spite of all the things that I don't think are gonna work about this movie, they're honoring the material, especially the songs. The Heart of the Little Mermaid is truly the music. It's everything that Howard Ashman brought into production because this is Howard Ashman's material. And I think that's part of the reason that I'm a little iffy about it becoming a live action movie because his whole guiding principle that brought him to work with Walt Disney Animation was the belief that animation as a medium had a magic unto itself that allowed an audience to suspend their disbelief that melded perfectly with musical theater. And he was right. And that's why Little Mermaid is so good. And that's why... I'm still not totally sold on it as a live action movie. That's why I've never been sold on it as a stage production. Like, it's a perfect animated film. However, in spite of all the things that I am still not convinced are going to work, they're honoring the music, they're honoring the material, they're reimagining it just enough to keep it fresh and to breathe new life into it while honoring Howard and Alan's work, and I love that. Let's watch more. No!
watch and you'll see. All right. So in contrast to the little love fest that I just had for how good the arrangement and the song was, this is just everything that I'm saying doesn't work for me. And I know I'm probably on an island here. <laughs> Pun not intended, but I'm rolling with it. I'm just so conflicted when it comes to all of this under the CGI, because obviously what we're looking at here are clips from under the sea, and it looks beautiful. It looks colorful, vibrant, it looks like a ton of fun. And full credit to the animators who created this, especially if any of you end up watching this video, I think your work is top tier stunning. However, once again, this is coming back to me feeling that Little Mermaid can really only work as an animated film because this is falling into that weird uncanny valley in between zone where it's not quite animated, it's not quite live action, it's like stylized live action animation. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done differently to make Under the Sea work. Truthfully, if I, again, had all the money and if I was Rob Marshall, I would have hired the Jim Henson Creature Shop to create a ton of puppets, a ton of under the sea puppets, and then there could have been like CGI embellishments, but there still would have been something tangible and real about them, and just for me, I think that would have been more magical, but the world we live in now is one of computer-generated imagery. I think the aesthetic is great, I'm just, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It looks a little busy, it looks a little too much, it's the same vibe that I was getting with Be Our Guest in the Beauty and the Beast live action remake. There was just so much happening, it hurt my feeble, simple-minded brain. Someday. Okay, okay. This is my hot take, once again. I think there is so much more magic in these shots. Everything that's happening above the water. And I know, it's just a simple shot. Prince Eric walking down a hallway. A shot that is, to be fair, probably mostly computer-generated imagery of Prince Eric's castle. But then the shot that wins my heart, Ariel in the carriage, just looking behind her. I mean, that is... That is evoking nostalgia for me because that's one of my favorite moments, like that entire sequence in the animated film when she's exploring his kingdom. You could just see Hallie's performance shining through here. And the reason that I think it works so much more for me is that when Ariel has legs, it means that Hallie is not physically restricted in any way and she's able to fully embody the character. And I like I know that that is literally the story of Little Mermaid. Like she doesn't want the tail she wants legs. But from a purely practical, logistical standpoint, we all know how these movies work. They were all like doing the full Marvel thing where they were likely in a room that was a giant green screen. Everyone playing a mermaid was probably at one point or another rigged up to a harness. They were like hanging from the ceiling. They probably had ping pong balls all over their faces. There were just so many physical things to there were just so many physical things likely at play to make them look like they were existing in this anti-gravity under the sea world that they had to think about a lot more than just their performance. I think there's a magic that comes from seeing the actors completely unrestricted, just being able to fully physically embrace whatever they're doing. And that's why that moment of Hallie in the carriage works so well for me. Just physically... Seeing Ariel swimming around versus seeing her in the carriage, it's like I'm watching two completely different movies. It's like I'm watching a literal cartoon versus a beautiful period piece. And I'm here for the beautiful period piece. I mean, I love a beautiful cartoon as well, but just, there just there's a discrepancy there that my feeble Matt brain can't reconcile. Let's watch more. Someday I'll be part of your yes! Yes! See, I know, I'm flip-flopping a lot in this trailer review between I love it and I hate it, but I love this. Again, they're not reinventing the wheel. This is a moment that worked perfectly in the animated film, and Rob has figured out how to capture that lightning in a bottle again to make it work in real life. And to go off of what I was just talking about, yes, I know she's a mermaid here, but... The lack of physical restriction, just being able to see Hallie exist as Ariel, simply observing from her rock, that is the simplicity that allows me to like fully invest in what's happening with her and with her performance without a terrifying crab distracting me floating over her shoulder. So this moment is pure magic and I love it. Is that the end of the trailer? Let's see. 
a human. You're a mermaid. That doesn't make us enemies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't come for me, Javier Bardem fans, but that just... <laughs> you're a mermaid. You're, you're in the wrong movie, Javier. You're in the wrong movie. That's like the intensity that you had in No Country for Old Men before you got that that compressed air thing that like shoved nails into people's heads. I, that's what I'm expecting you to do to poor Ariel here. But let's just move aside from that. Ariel's line, that doesn't make us enemies. I think that's a fascinating addition to the script. And it obviously works perfectly with the story of Little Mermaid because, you know, Triton doesn't want Ariel mingling with the humans. They kill fish, etc., etc. But just the choice of words that doesn't make us enemies. It adds a whole new level of stakes to the story and to Ariel's relationship with Eric that has always been there, but it's calling attention to it in a brand new way. It's giving us this like beautiful Romeo and Juliet-esque conflict that I love and I think is brilliant. So just, it's a simple line, but it has a lot of power to it. And it makes me think about that specific element of the story in a way that I never have before. So that's the kind of thing that I find exciting about reimaginings like this. Uh, let's watch more. So it ends with like a nice selection of shots. Once again, half of them look like I'm watching a Pixar movie. Half of them look like a real life historical epic. Will it be reconciled? Who knows? I mean, all in all, I am so excited for this movie. Yes, obviously I am being very critical about the things that I was always gonna be critical about. I stand by what I said three years ago. The Little Mermaid is a perfect animated movie. You really have to put a lot of work in to try to retell Little Mermaid in any other performance medium, like live action or on stage, just to come close to the effectiveness that comes with the fluidity of hand-drawn animation. So, I think for me, that's just something that I have to accept and get over. So once the movie actually does come around, I think I'm going to be able to compartmentalize and just put all of those qualms aside and hopefully focus on the things about this film that seem to work. Namely, the casting, especially Halle Bailey as Ariel. I have no doubt she is going to carry this movie with the heart that you need for it to work. I mean, we saw barely anything of Jonah as Prince Eric, but from the little we did see, I feel like he's going to be a decent Prince Eric. Overall, I think the supporting cast is incredible, minus my issues with Javier Bardem. I am so excited to see what Melissa McCarthy brings to the table as Ursula and Aquafina as Scuttle, I already know, is going to be the sleeper hit of the movie. I mean, can you imagine if Aquafina got like an Oscar nomination for her performance as Scuttle. It's not gonna happen, but I would be thrilled. So friends, there you go. My thoughts on the brand new Little Mermaid trailer. And with that, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 4-1. Now let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think of the Little Mermaid trailer? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation. And if you want to be the first to know when I release more videos about Disney, Shakespeare, Cats, Funko Pops, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And if you haven't subscribed already, it is so easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's the T cup for one. <sighs> she has legs, you idiot! Why, is, why does he look like that?